Good morning and welcome to Bible in a Year, as today we are on day 151 of uh, 365 days as we were going through the Bible. Uh, we are following the Adventure Timeline, which is the breakdown of the Holy Bible uh, by Jeff Cavins, um, in order that we might go through the whole Bible and more in 365 days from Genesis to Revelations, as we read this great love story between God and God's people. My name is Pastor Jay Lutz. Today we're going through the period of royal kingdoms, and uh, we're going to be traveling through 1 Kings 9, Ecclesiastes 6-7, to and Psalm 7. So a little bit about Ecclesiastes uh, sorry, 1 Kings 9, uh, Solomon finishes building the temple and his royal palace. God appears to him a second time. Remember, the first time is when um, Solomon asks for wisdom uh, and discernment for the people. And this is the second time he God appears and promises to walk ahead of him in integrity, but also warning him of his wayward, of possible waywardness and the consequences that come with that. Haram, the uh, king of Tyre, uh, is, talks with Solomon, and he uh, he's disappointed by the towns that Solomon has built for him. He calls them Kabul, meaning good for nothing. Uh-oh. So this is kind of begins to show the ways of Solomon and his wisdom. Many times he doesn't always follow in God's obedience, and this is probably part of that. Uh, Ecclesiastes 6 to 7, Solomon the wise one comes to an end of his life and he finds that life is oftentimes foolish. Uh, the building, uh, the builder finishes his life in ruin. As we have seen, the Lord has told Solomon that he will establish his throne forever. He does not turn away from him and he, even when he serves other gods, Solomon does not take the Lord's word to heart, however. Ecclesiastes can be troubling and times confusing, it can also be inspiring if we receive it correctly. The author of Ecclesiastes says that the days of our death are more important than the days of our birth, meaningless, all will end. If we recognize this, then we can live with clarity and purpose. Ecclesiastes 6, the author describes a man to whom God gives wealth and possessions, but did not, does not have the ability to enjoy them. Many of us can be trapped in this, worrying about the many things that we don't have. So at, then we cannot find joy in the gifts that we have been given. Ecclesiastes 7 advises us not to look back on the past, and think of it better than the present. And it says not to heed everything people say about it, lest we hear something negative. In our hearts we are aware that we have spoken negative things about others. Wisdom comes to understand that we are not necessarily, um, and do not necessarily mean much by our comments about others. We should not take others' comments about us to heart. Uh, so um, focus on the Lord, I guess, is the biggest takeaway here. And then lastly, uh, psalm 7 is a psalm of David, sung to the Lord regarding Cush, a Benjaminite. Most likely a descendant of Saul. Remember, there was much contention be between the houses of Saul, because Saul was from Benjamin, the smallest tribe, and uh, against uh, Judah, the tribe of David. And so um, some think that Cush may have been a, a sort of a, a sort of a what do you call it, racist term against him. I'm not sure if this is the case. I mean, I'm not a historian. I don't understand all these things. But what we do know is there's a lot of contention here and that he is uh, he is being uh, a thorn in, in David's side. And so David is lamenting to God about him. And so this is a petition, a psalm petition that God might come to his, to his, uh, to him and to guide him and guard his heart and, and his mind. Uh, so we'll read this all together. First Kings chapter nine. When Solomon had finished building the temple Lord and the royal palace and had achieved all he had desired to do, the Lord appeared to him a second time, and he had as he had appeared to him at Gibeon. The Lord said to him, I have heard the prayer and plea you have made before me. I have consecrated this temple which you have built by putting my name there forever. My eyes and my heart will always be there. As for you, if you walk before me in integrity of heart and uprightness, as David your father did, and do all I command and observe my decrees and laws, I will establish your royal throne over Israel forever. As I promised David your father when I saw, said, you shall never fail to have a man on the throne of Israel. But if you and your sons turn away from me and do not observe the commands and decrees I have given you, and go off to serve other gods and worship them, then I will cut off Israel from the land I have given them. And I will reject this temple I have consecrated for my name. 
Israel will then become a byword and an object of ridicule amongst all peoples. And though this temple is now imposing, all who pass by will be appalled. They'll scoff and say, why has the Lord done such a thing to this land and this temple? People will answer, because they have forsaken the Lord your God, who brought your fathers out of Egypt and have embraced other gods, worshipping and serving them. That is why the Lord brought all this disaster on them. At the end of 20 years, during which Solomon built these two buildings, the Temple of the Lord and the Royal Palace, King Solomon gave 20 towns in Galilee to Haram, king of Tyre, because Haram had supplied him with all the cedar and pine and gold he wanted. But when Haram went from Tyre to see the towns that Solomon had given him, he was not pleased with them. What kind of towns are these that you've given me, my brother, he asked. And he called them the land of Kabul, a name they have to this day. Now Haram had sent to the king 120 talents of gold. Here's the account of the forced labor king Solomon consecrated, sorry, conscripted to build the Lord's temple, his own palace, the supporting terraces, the walls of Jerusalem, and Hazor, Megiddo, and Gezer. Pharaoh, king of Egypt, had attacked and captured Gezer. He had set it on fire. He killed its Canaanites inhabitants and then gave it as a wedding gift to his daughter, Solomon's wife. And Solomon rebuilt Gezer. He built up Lower Beth Haran, Baleth, and Tadmor in the desert within his land, as well as all his store cities and the towns for his chariots and for his horses, whatever he desired to build in Jerusalem, in Lebanon, and throughout all the territory he ruled. All the people left from the Amorites, Hittites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites. These were people not Israelites. That is, their descendants remained in the land whom the Israelites could not exterminate, these Solomon conscripted for his slave labor force, as it is to this day. But Solomon did not make slaves of any of the Israelites. They were his fighting men, his officers, his captains, and the commanders of his chariots and charioteers. They were also the chief officials in charge of Solomon's projects. 550 officers supervising the men who did the work. After Pharaoh's daughter had come up from the city of David to the palace Solomon had built for her, he constructed the supporting terraces. Three times a year, Solomon sacrificed burnt offerings and fellowship offerings on the altar he had built to the Lord, burning incense before the Lord among, along with them and so fulfilling the temple obligations. King Solomon also built ships at Ezion Geber, which is near Elath and Edom, on the shore of the Red Sea. And Haram sent his men, sailors who knew the sea, to serve in the fleet with Solomon's men. They sailed to Ophir and brought back 420 talents of gold, which they delivered to King Solomon. Here ends our first reading. Our second reading comes from Ecclesiastes chapters 6 and 7. Chapter 6. I have seen another evil under the sun, and it weighs heavily on me. God gives man wealth, possessions, and honor, so that he lacks nothing his heart desires. But God does not enable him to join, to enjoy them, and a stranger enjoys them instead. This is meaningless, a grievous evil. A man may have a hundred children and live many years, yet no matter how long he lives, if he cannot enjoy his prosperity and does not receive proper burial, I say that a stillborn child is better off than he. It comes without meeting, it departs in darkness, and in darkness its name is shrouded. Though it never saw the sun or knew anything, it has more rest than does that man. Even if he lives a thousand years twice over, uh, but fails to enjoy his prosperity. Do not all go to the same place. All man's efforts are for his mouth, yet his appetite is never satisfied. What advantage has a wise man over a fool? What does a poor man gain by knowing how to conduct himself before others? Better what the eye sees than the roving of the appetite. This too is meaningless, a chasing after the wind. Whatever exists has already been named, and what man is... Has, no, has been known, no man can contend with one who is stronger than he. The more the words, the less the meaning, and how does that profit anyone? For who knows what is good for a man in life during the few and meaningless days he passes through like a shadow? Who can tell him what will happen under the sun after he is gone? Chapter 7 A good name is better than fine perfume, and the day of death better than the day of birth. It is better to go to a house of mourning than to go to a house of feasting, for death is the destiny of every man. The living should take this to heart. Sorrow is better than laughter, because a sad face is good for the heart. 
The heart of the wise is in the house of the morning, but the heart of fools is in the house of pleasure. It is better to heed a wise man rebuke than listening to the song of fools. Like the crackling of thorns under the pot, so is the laughter of fools. This too is meaningless. Extortion turns a wise man into a fool, and a bribe corrupts the heart. The end of a matter is better than its beginning, and patience is better than pride. Do not be quickly provoked in your spirit, for anger resides in the lap of fools. Do not say, why were the old days better than these? For it is not wise to ask such questions. Wisdom like an inheritance is a good thing and benefits those who see the sun. Wisdom is a shelter, as money is a shelter. But the advantage of knowledge is this, that wisdom preserves the life of its possessor. Consider what God has done. Who can straighten what he has made crooked? When times are good, be happy. But when times are bad, consider, God has made the one as well as the other. Therefore, a man cannot discover anything about his future. In this meaningless life of mine, I have seen both of these. A righteous man perishing in his righteousness, and a wicked man living long in his wickedness. Do not be over-righteous, neither be over-wise. Why destroy yourself? Do not be over-wicked, and do not be a fool. Why die before your time? It is good to grasp the one and not let go of the other. The man who fears God will avoid all extremes. Wisdom makes one wise, man more powerful than ten rulers in a city. There is not a righteous man on earth who does what is right and never sins. Do not pay attention to every word people say, or you may hear your servant crushing you, for you know in your heart that many times you yourself have cursed others. All this I test by wisdom, and I said, I am determined to be wise. But this was beyond me. Whatever wisdom may be, it is far off and most profound. Who can discover it? So I turn my mind to understand, to investigate and to search out wisdom, and the scheme of things, and to understand the stupidity of wickedness, and the madness of folly. I find more bitter than death the woman who is a snare, whose heart is a trap and whose hands are chains. The man who pleases God will escape her, but the sinner she will ensnare. Look, says the teacher, this is what I have discovered, adding one thing to another to discover the scheme of things. While I was still searching, but not finding, I found one upright man amongst a thousand, but not one upright woman amongst them all. This only have I found, God made mankind upright, but men have gone in search of many schemes. Here ends the second reading. Our last reading comes from Psalm 7, Shigeon of David, which he sang to the Lord concerning Cush, a Benjamite. We're not sure what a Shigeon, we think it's probably a literary or musical term. Uh, o Lord my God, I take refuge in you. Save and deliver me from all who pursue me, or they will tear me like a lion and rip me to pieces with no one to rescue me. O Lord my God, if I have done this, and there is guilt on my hands, if I have done evil to him, who is at peace with me, or without cause, have robbed my foe, then let my enemy pursue and overtake me. Let him trample my life to the ground and make me sleep in the dust. Arise, O Lord, in your anger. Rise up against the rage of my enemies. Awake, my God. Decree justice. Let the assembled people gather around you. Rule over them from on high. Let the Lord judge the peoples. Judge me, O Lord, according to my righteousness. According to my integrity, O Most High. O righteous man who searches minds and heart, bring to an end the violence of the wicked and make the righteous secure. My shield is God most high who saves the upright in heart. God is a righteous judge, a God who expresses his wrath every day. If he does not relent, he will sharpen his sword. He will bend and string his bow. He has prepared his deadly weapon. He makes ready his flaming arrow. He who is pregnant with evil and conceives trouble, giving birth disillusionment. He who digs a hole and scoops it out falls into the pit he has made. The trouble he has caused recoils on himself. His violence comes down on his own head. I will give thanks to the Lord because of his righteousness, and I will sing praise to the name of the Lord Most High. Here ends our reading. Uh, David speaks of... These things concerning this uh, 
Cush, a Benjaminite. Uh, it seems as though he's pursued him in wickedness. He has done him evil. Um, and that he per pursues him to tear him apart like a lion. Uh, and David says, if I have wronged him, if I have done something in which I have caused um, for this peaceful interaction with people to um, uh, to cause harm to this man, so be it. Show me by um, that I will be eventually trampled down. But if this isn't the case, if I have done which is righteous before God, then God, look from heaven, search my heart and my mind, and bring an end to this wickedness, this righteousness that you have secured, because you're a righteous judge, you make all things right. And when evil seems to arise, you cause their troubles to be poured back upon themselves. Um, he says, I, all I can do is give you thanks. And if my end does come, my end comes. And if not, may you always be praised. This is a great approach to take. And humility, David shows us what it is to have humility, that if we do wrong, so be, show us um, and turn us away from that in order that we might always praise you and give you righteousness. Uh, then we see this uh, as well in Ecclesiastes. Um, Solomon comes to the fact of learning that, yeah, all the things that we do, we labor. Um, we, uh, we need to see that um, we have to turn to God's wisdom, uh, that in, that God gives us, uh, our name and that he exalts us in what we do. Uh, he says that as long as we might live for him, even sorrow becomes better than, uh, delight, better than passion than any of these things. Because when we have these things, we don't have God while we, we, uh, we, they're, they're fleeting, they're meaningless. And so uh, we must consider God's wisdom that it might be inheritance for us, that we might benefit. It might become a shelter for us and that we might take advantage of God's knowledge and that we might possess life and that we might, uh, that we might have the life that God gives. Uh, this is also um, many sobering words that we hear from Solomon. And lastly, we hear in chapter 9 of 1 Kings, the Lord appears to Solomon and he gives him both a uh, blessing that he will walk with him and warning that if he turns from him that um, he'll be the mocking and scorn of the people around. And unfortunately, this is what happens after King Solomon. And then we see Solomon's activities. Most of them sound pretty good, except for his... Uh, Hiram of Tyre, uh, these towns that he gives him, uh, he's like, okay, everything we've done up to now has been great, but what's with these towns you gave me, man? These are terrible, terrible towns. I, I'm going to call them good for nothing because you made, you gave me uh, a shoddy deal here. I gave you a whole bunch of things and you give me these towns? Like, what's up, brother? Like, what gives? And so, which he's more than entitled to say this to Solomon because... He has worked very hard alongside of him and given him, uh, made him very wealthy uh, and vice versa. And so uh, we have to be careful about that we don't shortcut our friends or, or those people who are working with us uh, because that's not cool. It's, it's always good to give our word and to give of abundance to those around us as we have been given by God. Uh, talking about abundance that God has given us, he's given us the ability to pray to him that he might... Um, shower us with his mercy and his love um, and that we might shower him with our love for him and our praise uh, so let us do that father in heaven thank you so much we thank you for your word thank you for your wisdom that you share with us allowing us to ask questions and question the reality of things as we see with david thank you for letting us invite these questions um, that we might know of your righteousness, these questions of mystery of evil and the mystery of evil in our own hearts. Thank you for allowing us to come to you with all our questions, with all our brokenness, um, that you might bind us up. Thank you for sharing the words, the words of this preacher uh, in Ecclesiastes who gets us to ask the bigger question, inviting us to ask these questions um, of what the meaning of life is and your purpose in order that you might show us your wisdom and give us purpose. We give you praise and thanks in all that you've given us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for 
coming walking alongside me in the Bible uh, this day and for all the days. Um, my goodness, we are on day 151, and it's just it's incredible. We're uh, we're we're moving along, and I thank you for enjoying this journey. I've sure enjoyed it. Uh, uh, may you may you be blessed as you learn that you grow in the wisdom and knowledge and fear of the Lord. Have a blessed day.